my name is Drago. A lot of people think that like leather and king is just like about like you know sex and things like that. But you know, there's more about that. There's like the camaraderie, the brotherhood. I like wearing leather <laughs> in the first things, like you know, it's the smells kind of like close me up and things like that. Um, but like, but at the same time, um, as a gay man, like it's just like um, it makes me um, confident wearing it, and it just um, makes me masculine. I feel really powerful in leather. I think that it makes me feel very, uh, it makes me feel very strong and it makes me feel very dominant. On one hand, it makes me feel that I belong to a community of people who are not necessarily like-minded because we all have different fetishes and we all like different things, but at least people who are open-minded and who will not be judgy, will be very understanding. And uh, on a physical level, it makes me feel really good, it makes me feel uh attractive and sexy in a way that maybe i wouldn't feel if i'm not using it and i know it, it gets gets me it got me a husband <laughs> Like I did graphic design, that's not for me. <laughs> there's like a spectrum of like when someone says leather, there's like wearing leather as fashion versus wearing leather as a fetish. The word leather can encompass so much. It is evolving just like anything, but it's a slow process because of tradition is hard to evolve out of. I'm deep into leather, like uh, motorcycles, BDSM, like the whole thing. That's why I, <laughs> that's why I do what I do. <laughs> and I'm making things that are going to last forever. Trimming things off like this is a part of detail work. This one's a special order. It's easier to clean from, you know, sweat or whatever sort of body fluid happens. Sometimes people don't know, like the nature of leather. Constructing this stuff is kind of like soft sculpture. <laughs> I really honestly didn't think that this could be a thing that people do. I always wanted to be like a fashion designer. I didn't think I have, had enough money to do that or I wasn't the right kind of person to do that. Why does leather have to be a certain thing? There's no rules to leather. Leathercore is my brand, so I'm doing my best to kind of unite utilitarian style, queer style, things that I want to wear basically with leathercore. I don't agree with how intensely overwhelming and out of control it is with, with how many animals are slaughtered. I use a lot of scrap. I don't cut into like fresh hides all the time. I think leather's for everyone, even people that want to wear something as a huge fashion statement. Great. Also, if you want to explore BDSM, I'm available. Uh, my name is Race. Bannon. I've taught probably 300 classes in, in my lifetime to various audiences. I've spoken to audiences from 12 people in a room to 3,000 in a room. I've been in the scene a very long time and I've been very involved in the community for a long time. No one really knows the definitive source of leather, but we certainly know some of the likely origins. Military men being discharged so that kind of militaristic background was very comfortable with authority figures and uniforms and things like that. Couple that with the biker aesthetic that was very appealing to the hyper-masculine gay men of that era. And you end up with Leatherman. Um, the Wild One uh, absolutely was influential. It was one of the first kind of iconic hyper-masculine figures. Indeed, it did influence leather culture in adopting that kind of look. A lot of younger people in particular are eschewing the word leather, adopting other ways of describing themselves besides leather because they see leather as kind of an old paradigm. I don't think that anyone consciously defined leather as a hyper-masculine symbol. I think it did 
come to mean that? When I first came to Mr. S, I already knew how to sew. I was already making a lot of things. My name is Skeeter. Um, I've been here for mm, 28 years. So it started off very much as a one of several mom and pop type stores in San Francisco. Small hole in the wall leather places. Mr. S kept growing and growing like it blossomed. When I think of leather, I think of power. I think of creativity, because for me, I create with leather. So, you know, so I think about creativity and expression. And I also think of it in terms of traditional, because, you know, in the leather community, there is very so, sort of much an old guard traditional feel to the chaps, you know, the sort of the breeches, the jackets of Tom of Finland look. I just think it's a lot you can do with leather that makes it really um, adaptable. And so I get excited because I'm like, I could do so much with that. You know, the smell of leather, the look of leather, the feel of leather, you know, really makes people happy. You know, our tagline of when you're ready for the best, it's that thing of our craftsmanship has just been honed to a fine point. We are a company that has employed people in the community. And we have a wide range of folks. We have trans folks, we have, you know, queer folks, we have women, we have men, we have non-binary, we have, you know, a lot of our um, tailors and sewers are from the Chinese community. We have, you know, really incredible skilled crafts people from the Latino community. So I think that what we do is we represent in the whole company across every department, and it's big, is a really beautiful um, mixture of people from all different backgrounds. Some into SM, and some into the play, and some into the culture, and some not. They're just incredible tailors or sewers or craftspeople. It represents different things to different people. For some people, it's fashion. For other people, it's really like, it says something, it's a statement. We kind of operate like a village and there's just this collaboration and this, it's just really nice to see it. People from very, very different backgrounds coming together and working together and collaborating. So I think that makes us very special. I grew up in the 80s watching like, for those characters, those like super muscly guys in their costumes. Leather makes me feel like a superhero. You know, leather gives me the confidence and I feel like it gives other people the confidence to either like say something that you wouldn't normally say or actually like do something that you really want to do but probably wouldn't if you were in jeans. I moved to San Francisco when I just turned 21. So I came here to the powerhouse. Said I worked here, I go-go danced for a little bit and uh, the manager was like, hey, we're having this contest if you're interested. And I'm like, okay, sure. So uh, I won. I went from Mr. Powerhouse Leather to Mr. San Francisco Leather. If you're lucky enough to win that title, then you go to the international contest. So I figured if I'm going to go to an international competition, I, I should go to have fun, but, but hey, why, why not try and win? It's really a worldwide thing. I mean, I, I joke that it's like the game is universe. There's something called pecs and personality, which is basically you wear a jock strap. If you think of leather as more of a lifestyle, and if you get invested in the leather community, leather doesn't become just simply clothing or simply a material. It becomes a network of people. It becomes a network of organizations. It becomes a network of businesses. Um, it gets to be more human.